Let me set the tone for the tone curve. Actually, uh, never mind. Um, intro. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram or subscribe to me here on YouTube and have seen my cinematic vlogs, a lot of you have been asking for a while how I get my photos and videos to pop. But out of all the different ways you can make your photo or video footage pop, I think the tone curve is a secret to the best results. Using the tone curve or not using the tone curve at all could either make or break your edits. And in all honesty, the bulk of your edits could actually be done with the tone curve. Today we're gonna to take a closer look at the tone curve, tell you what it is, how you can use it, and how it works so you could use it to make some changes in your own edits and hopefully make your edits look that much more better and that much more professional. Now I'm gonna be using the photo editor Adobe Lightroom CC to show you how the tone curve works in this tutorial, but keep in mind what I'm about to tell you about the tone curve and what I'm about to teach you could be applied to any tone curve you use within any editing app. And actually, if you wanna try Adobe Lightroom CC or Adobe Premiere Pro CC for free, you could do so through Adobe's free trial of both of those applications. I will be sure to leave a link to their free trial in the video description box below, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's tell you about the tone curve. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom CC, and if you look over here to the right, this is our tone curve. In a nutshell, the tone curve represents the entire tonality of the photo we're editing. Or, if you're using the tone curve within a video editing application, the tone curve represents the tonality of the clip you're currently editing. These same terms, concepts, edits, tips, tricks, all this I'm about to tell you about can be applied to your tone curve within whatever editing application you're using, whether it's photo or video. The tone curve is the tone curve, and what you're about to learn will help you no matter what you're doing using a tone curve. Now the easiest way to look at a tone curve and what it does is that it adjusts the entire range of brightness values within the photo. On the very bottom left of the tone curve, we have the blackest of blacks. And then on the top right of the tone curve, we have the whitest of whites. And then everything else in between represents a part of the photo as well. So somewhere in here where it's very dark, we probably have close to a true black value right here. And then I don't think we quite have a true white value, but these are getting up to the highlights up in this area, which is the top part of the tone curve. And that's something to think about about too. Since everything else in between the tone curve, between the bottom left and the top rightmost points, represents a part of the image, naturally, the closest you are to the blacks, the lower part of the tone curve is going to represent the shadows within your photo. And then in the middle of the tone curve, that's going to start to represent your midtones, probably on this side of the drone. And then as you start to look at the highlights or the brightest part of the photo, the upper part of the tone curve is going to represent those. So we have our black point, our shadows, our midtones, our highlights, and then our white point right here. You'll also notice that we have several different tone curves to choose from. We have our regular RGB tone curve, which looks like this, and then we have individual red, green, and blue tone curves as well. We also have a parametric curve here, which is basically a point curve that's tile-based, meaning it allows you to make adjustments based on the tiles you see here, and that'll allow you to fine-tune your tone curve adjustments, but I rarely use this because most of what I want to get done, most of what I want to achieve in editing my photo or video can be done with just the RGB curve or the individual red, green, and blue tone curves themselves. We'll get into the red, green, and blue individual channels, the individual tone curves in just a second, but for now, let's teach you the RGB curve. By default, you're gonna have a completely 45 degree line, which again, goes from the blacks to the whites. And what you can do is drop several points on this tone curve so that you can start making adjustments. Now you'll see when you start to make adjustments, you will still maintain an original 45 degree line. That's your baseline. That's what the tone curve would be without any adjustments. You're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that because that's gonna help you understand how your tone curve works with your adjustments. You'll notice no matter what part of your photo you're adjusting, let's take the shadows for example, if you start to drag the points on the lower part of the tone curve above that baseline, what you're gonna do is make those parts of the photo brighter. Now in the case of the shadows, you're bringing out more details, you can see what's going on, it's not as dark. The same kind of concept can be applied to the highlights part of the photo. As you lift this tone curve above the baseline, you're brightening up the highlights. Now if we go in the opposite direction, if we drag our tone curve below that baseline, everything gets darker, both in the shadows and again in the highlights. This is true for the entire tone curve you're adjusting. Anytime you're bringing a point above that baseline, you're making that part of the photo brighter. Anytime you're bringing it below that baseline, you're making that part of the photo darker. That's basically how the tone curve works, but with most 
most things in photography, it doesn't just end there. If we drop some points or anchors, that'll allow you to make more specific adjustments to specific parts of your photo. The less anchors you have, for example, the broader and more general your adjustments are gonna be and you're affecting a greater part of the photo here. We're actually not just affecting the shadows in this tone curve, we're also starting to affect the mid-tones as well, as you can see from our tone curve and the resulting photo. Now you can also see, if you drag your whites all the way down to the bottom, we'll have a completely black image because you just made all your white values completely black. The same can be applied if you drag your black point all the way up. You're gonna have a completely white image. Now by experimenting with the tone curve and making adjustments this way, you can really start to get an idea of how it works and how your adjustments will affect the overall photo you're editing. Nine times out of 10, when I'm making adjustments to my photo edit, whether it be for Instagram or for a client, whatever the case is, most of what I wanna do can get done with just the RGB tone curve. We do have red, green, and blue tone curves for a reason, however, and now that you understand how the regular RGB tone curve works, let's get into those. In the digital landscape, your photo is composed of red, green, and blue values. By mixing those three values together, we create the overall coloring of your photo in the digital format. Now, I'm not gonna go into specifics on how that actually works. That's enough for an entirely different video, but just know at any point in your photo, you have various red, green, and blue values that are making up the photo when viewed in the digital format on a digital device. So when editing in a digital photo editor or a digital video editor, we have control over those values through the red, green, and blue tone curves. And what's important to remember about the R, G, and B tone curves is that they behave and act the same exact way our RGB tone curve acts. You have the shadows of the image on the lower part of the tone curve, the midtones in the middle part of the tone curve, and then the highlights on the higher part of the tone curve. And basically what you're doing individually with these individual channels is either taking away or adding the corresponding color value. So since we're on the red tone curve, similar to the RGB tone curve, anytime we are raising our red tone curve above our base line, we are adding red values to that corresponding part of the photo. Now with that one move, we basically just warmed up our entire photo. We have more of a magenta cast on our entire photo now because we took our red values pretty much across the entire photo up above that baseline, adding more red values to our photo. Now if we go in the opposite direction, we're going to be removing red values from our photo, leaving behind green and blue values, which as we can see, will result in a more teal or blue and green like color in our photo. The nice thing about Adobe Lightroom CC is that it actually shows you what your tone curve adjustments will result in on either side of the baseline. If we move it up towards here, as you can see, we will be adding more red to that part of the photo. And then if we move it below the baseline, as it shows here in Adobe Lightroom CC, we'll be adding more blue and greens. Not every editor actually has this kind of cool table that shows you what the resulting colors will be. So it's kind of cool that you have that within Adobe Lightroom CC. But let's clear that and go over to the green channel the same exact thing is gonna happen. If we raise our green tone curve above the baseline, we're adding more greens pretty much across the entire image because of this point once again. And if we go in the opposite direction, now we're adding more magenta because we're leaving behind red and blue values. If we clear that and go over to our last blue tone curve right here, same exact thing. If we raise our blue tone curve above the baseline, we're adding blues to our photo. And if we go in the opposite direction, all of a sudden we're adding more yellows. Now, since we're technically taking away blue values that would leave behind red and green values, which I think if mixed together would create brown, but in the digital format, when you're taking away blue values, basically what you're left with is yellows. And again, Lightroom CC makes this easy to understand stand based on the color coordinated parts of the tone curves individually. And one thing to keep in mind here is that these individual red, green, and blue tone curves do interact and impact one another. So for instance, if we raise the red values on the red tone curve, and then also raise the green values on the green tone curve, that's essentially, as you'll see from this photo right here, the same as just taking away blue values. Because what you're doing is lowering the number of blue values within the photo and basically leaving behind a greater number of red and green values. Now, let's raise the blue values and then raise the green values, which, if we look over here at our photo, results in a teal-looking tinged photo. And this would be the same thing as when we just take away red values. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight on how the three tone curves actually work together when they're individually adjusted. And hopefully that makes you understand how the RGB tone curve affects all three at once. So if we were to raise our RGB tone curve above our baseline, you can see it's an overall brighter image and we would get the same result 
by raising all three of our red, green, and blue tone curves individually. So just remember that all these tone curve adjustments basically interact with one another. And once you start to experiment with the individual tone curves in the RGB tone curve, after a while, you'll basically just understand what adjustments you have to make to achieve certain looks within your photo. It might seem a little bit complicated at first, but I promise you it's actually pretty simple once you start to experiment with the tone curves to get a better feel for how they work and how they work with one another. The tone curve and understanding how to use it is a super powerful tool to have in your photo or video editing. And the more you start to work with it, the more you can really start to stylize and fine tune the look of your photo or video. Now what I'm gonna do is properly expose my photo as I typically would do in my photo editing workflow. And then we're gonna quickly make some adjustments to the tone curve to show you how you could use the tone curve to take your exposure adjustments just a step further and stylize your photo. All right, so here we are. I made some adjustments to the exposure settings over here. You can see the before and after. But now you can start to use the tone curve, as I typically do, to make some stylistic adjustments. For instance, I love to add a cinematic fade to most of my photo edits. You could do that using the tone curve. I like to also sometimes make the highlights pop a little bit or even take them below the baseline to make them preserve a little bit more detail. In this photo, I'm gonna move it up a little bit and then just slightly adjust our midtones, And that's looking pretty good. This is typically what you would call an S-curve within your tone curve. An S-curve, because of the way it looks here, allows you to manually add some more contrast to your photo and is typically one of the main adjustments you'll make to your tone curve. Now I'm looking at the highlights and for this particular edit that I'm quickly doing, I'd like to add a little bit more blue to the highlights. So I can do that by going over to our blue tone curve, dropping some points and then slowly bringing up the highlights part of our blue tone curve above the baseline. Now all of a sudden, we've just added some blues to the highlights. Now if you wanted to warm up the shadows a little bit, you could do the same kind of thing with the red tone curve. Just drop some points on the red tone curve and slowly bring up our shadows above our baseline. And there you can see the before and after. And this is already allowing for a pretty cool cross-processed kind of look. Now in my editing process, what I'll usually do is go in and spend a lot more time in the RGB, red, green, and blue tone curves, making specific adjustments. But already, this is making a pretty cool effect. And hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of how to start using the tone curve and the individual RGB tone curves to your advantage in photo editing and in video editing. And those are the tone curves. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the tone curves. Hopefully that gives you a better idea of what the tone curve is, how it works, and how you can more efficiently and effectively use it on your edits. As always, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, at bmacadelic on Instagram, and don't forget to use the hashtag bmacadelic so I can check out some of your edits using the tone curve tips we talked about in this tutorial. As always, I'll be liking and commenting on some of my favorites. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe with notifications turned on, so that you never miss another video like this one on this channel. And if it's not too much to ask, if you have an extra second, please don't forget to comment down below your thoughts about this video, or more importantly, perhaps even share some of your own tone curve tips and tricks. Maybe you've got a couple secrets about the tone curve hidden up your sleeve. If so, comment them down below, let me know. That about does it for this video. I'm gonna change my desk to match the color of my tone from my editing right now, which happens to be pink. Alexa, make my desk pink. Just set the tone for the tone curve. I keep trying to use that joke. I don't think it's working. It's, it needs some work. I'll see you guys in my next video.